Hello all, welcome to Robopreneur. Today in this session, we will discuss how an ESP32 and uh, NRF24 module combination can be used as a server and gateway. So what a gateway does in IoT, it will just do some kind of processing and send it to cloud. So here our gateway will send the data every 5 seconds. This is the simplest possible gateway which we can implement. Uh, for this purpose, the hardware which we use is ESP32 development board, ESP32 camera uh, camera module, and uh, NRF uh, two NRF modules, and one uh, temperature and pressure sensor that is uh, BMP180. The software which we'll use is uh, Platform IO. Now, first we'll have a brief discussion on the hardware, and then we'll uh, have some uh, explanation about the code and then we will move on to the demonstration. Let's get started. Now, let's discuss the peripherals and the code used for this activity. The first one is NRF24 module. This works in the frequency range of 2.4 GHz to 2.5 to 5 GHz. It actually communicates uh, in channels. So this, uh, this frequency range is divided into channels of each 1 megahertz byte that is the bandwidth of each channel is 1 megahertz which means it communicates with 125 different channels uh, as you can see in the pinout apart from vcc and ground we have ce cns mosi miso and uh, clock so it uses spi communication protocol to communicate with the microcontroller the next one is bmp180 so this has 5 pins, 3.3, VCC, ground, SCL, SDA. Some of them may not have VCC, they'll have only 3.3. But as you can see, apart from this 3.3 and ground, we have SCL, SDA, which means it uses I2C communication protocol to communicate with the microcontroller. Now we'll see how to send a file to SPI FFS memory of ESP32. SPI FFS memory is like an SD card, onboard SD card on the ESP32. So let's see that. Create a new project and uh, click on the new project. So I have created it with the name sample project. Once you click on that, then we have to make a folder with the name data. So click on this. As you can see, this is the new folder. When you click on it, uh, it will just ask for the name name it as data so I have already done that so this is the data folder which I have already created and again on the data folder if you click on that if you click on this you can create a new file so this new file will be inside the data folder so just create create some uh, text file and write some text in it so I have already done so that will be so that is uh, sample.txt sample text.txt and I have uh, written one line of text now we will send this file to SPI FFS memory so in order to do that first click on this platform IO icon and here you can see this ESP32 dev so click on that and it will expand and then you have to go to general and in general you have platform so click on platform and that expands to this so you have to click on this upload file system image after connecting. So now I'm connecting the board and now I'm clicking on this. So it will just take some time to upload. So yes, you can see that, uh, you can see the success message. So it means now it has been uploaded to SPI FFS memory of the ESP32. Now let's check the contents. Let's check whether the file is actually uploaded. Now uh, just go to the projects wherever you are doing that. And inside the main folder, uh, I mean in the sample project, there will be this source and in the main.cpp, we will just write this code to check whether our uh, our file is actually inside the memory. So it is, you know, you have to include this library spffs.h and here is where we'll open that file 
and that will be opened from the SPIFS memory and the contents are printed on the terminal. Let's upload this code and see that. So now I'm uploading it. So it's writing. So now it has been uploaded, the code has been uploaded. Now I'll go to the serial monitor and press the reset key. And as you can see, the line is printed that is hello, I'm in SPIFFS memory. So this means our file is successfully uploaded to the SPIFFS memory. So now that we have learned how to upload into the SPIFFS memory, uh, let's have a brief discussion on the code which we are going to upload to our uh, transmitter and receiver. Now again, uh, I'm closing this file. Now again, create uh, two projects, one for transmitter and uh, one for receiver. And this is the transmitter code. So here it is. Uh, we have, uh, of, of course, we have to include uh, Arduino.h and then we have uh, three external three external libraries for uh, you know RF communication and uh, reading from the sensor. Now, let me go to the INI file. So as you can see here, these are the two ex two external libraries which uh, we are uh, using, which we are using, one for RF communication and one for the BMP sensor. In fact, uh, that uh, when we look at the code, here we have NRF24. Uh, so both are actually included in the same link, uh, whatever I have shown here. So in this, uh, those two are included and this one is used for BMP sensor. Now we create a structure called weather data, which uh, has uh, temperature and pressure and then here we will check uh, whether the BMP sensor is uh, valid or I mean if the wiring is correct or not and then we will actually begin. So this radio.begin is where the communication uh, gets started and this value as you can see UN64 value this is actually the address of the uh, receiver the receiver. So then here open writing pipe. So this is for trans since uh, we are transmitting we are opening we are opening the writing pipe and from there we will actually transmit the data now this is where we will read the temperature we will read the pressure and we will send the data at this point that is radio dot write so this is the transmitter portion and now let's move to the receiver portion so uh, this is the receiver portion that is uh, rx nrf now let me open the main file for that Yes, so this is the receiver portion. So here uh, we need only that uh, external library of uh, RF communication because we are not attaching any other peripherals. So here this is the receiver portion and this value should be the same because this is what uh, we are communicating. Now, I mean the address value. Now again we create the uh, structure and here we will uh, set up the, you know, set up the NRF module. And then here you can see that it is start listening. So since it is receiver, it has to listen to the uh, whatever the transmitter has sent. And uh, this is where the values are read. If radio dot available, which means if the uh, if there is some data uh, on the channel, then it is read. Uh, otherwise, it will just print a message that uh, it's not available, and it reads for every one second. Now here is where the uh, this is the route for the uh, web page, whatever the, the server, whatever we are creating. Now, as you can see here, this HTML file is in the SPIFFS memory. So that this uh, we have to uh, create a HTML file and send it to SPIFFS memory. So again, the procedure like we have discussed initially, we just have to create a folder with the name data and you can name it anything you want. I have named it as index two. you can name it anything you want. So this is the HTML file. 
and what it basically does is it will take the temperature and pressure readings and it will update in it in the form of a table so now that we have uh, discussed uh, uh, the code let's actually see the uh, pin connections before we go to the demonstration so these are the pin connections at the transmitter side this BMP 180 is connected to ESP32 uh, the connections of BMP 180 and ESP32 so VCC is connected to 3.3 ground is ground and SEL SDA of BMP 30 BMP 180 are connected to 22 and 21 pins of ESP32 because that's where the inbuilt uh, uh, SEL SDA pins of uh, ESP32 are available and coming to the next one that is with NRF module so this CECS, uh, SCK, MISO, MOSI, these are related to SPI communication. These pins we have written in the program. So we are connecting accordingly. This is this is the pins we have chosen, we have selected in the program. So as you can see, uh, let's go to the program once. So here is for source and yes, as you can see 12, 14, 26, 25, 27. So this is CE, CSL. So that's how, uh, depending on this, we have uh, made the we, we have to make the connections. So we can choose any of the uh, GPIOs that are available. Now coming to the receiver side, receiver side, of course, we have only NRF module. So of course, as uh, as usual, VCC to 3.3, ground to ground, and these are again the pins which we have chosen on the uh, receiver side for the SPI communication. So now let's move to the demonstration part uh, so as discussed uh, this is the hardware connections uh, this is the uh, i have chosen this to be transmitter and this to be receiver and here i have connected the uh, sensor and an rf module and this sensor of course gives temperature and pressure readings and this is the receiver section now i am uploading the code to transmitter section It's uh, getting uploaded. So now this is successfully uploaded at the transmitter side. Now I'll be uploading it on the receiver side. So uh, now it's successfully uploaded. Uh, let me go to the serial monitor and just let's see the IP address which is generated because that's where the data is stored. So it's connecting to Wi-Fi. Uh, so as you can see the Wi-Fi is now connected and uh, this is the IP address that is uh, 192.168.43.148 so we just have to open the browser and uh, type this IP address uh, so that we, we will see the uh, readings which are received and also uh, please remember that we have to up uh, upload this HTML file onto the HPIFS memory like uh, the same way which I have uh, explained before. So now we will try, we will open, uh, we will open this uh, link and see the readings. So now I have connected this and now I will be opening this IP address. So I will just uh, press a reset so that it will start from the beginning. So now the web page is open. Now uh, it's in the form of the table. It's in the form of a table. Now, as you can see, uh, we are getting timestamp, we are getting temperature and pressure values for every five seconds.
so that's all for this session the code will be available in the description below thank you